They're called the greatest generation, men and women from all walks of life, who grew up in the Great Depression, led our nation to victory in World War II, and helped make America a beacon of freedom and democracy for all the world. And do they have some stories to tell? I'm pleased to be partnering with the New York State Military Museum and Veterans Research Center to preserve the words and memories of many of our World War II veterans. These stories will be entered into the state's archives, where they will be accessible to researchers, academics, and future generations. Our veterans have given so much to help build a brighter future for all Americans. This tribute is just one small way of saying thank you. Now, when you, you found out you were getting drafted, did you get nervous at all? Were you, were, were you scared? Were you excited? Were you just, oh, I got to do this? I mean, what, what, what was your initial reaction when you found that news out? No, no, no ready to go. Ready to go? Uh-huh. But so, then the first time they turned me down. Now, now why was that? Yeah, because they said I was wearing glasses, I couldn't go. Okay. So the then next, what? The next time they called, if you could find a doorknob, you were in. <laughs> so... So you found the doorknob, all right, I imagine. Yeah, I found the doorknob, and so, they got me in. So, so now, where did you where did you go for any sort of training that you had to do? The training, uh, we went to uh, Fort Niagara. Mm -hmm. When we got, were drafted, they took us to Syracuse, then to Fort Niagara. From Fort Niagara, uh, we went to uh, Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. uh, we went on. We stayed at the St. Dennis Hotel. Took basic training on the boardwalk right there. Mm -hmm. now, 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 what sort of basic training did you do? Because you said you uh, oh, drill, the drills, uh, deal out in the fields and back of the hotels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what branch of the military did you serve in? Uh, Air Force. The Air Force. Eighth Air Force. The Eighth Air Force. Okay. So now, how long were you um, were you doing your basic training for? Uh, we were there for ten weeks. Ten weeks. Now, now, what were sort of you know some of the things that you had to learn? Uh. Oh, drill was mostly the thing. Yeah, of course, and they had you on KP and everything, too. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Was that an enjoyable experience for you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. One morning, on, they called us out for KP at 3.30 in the morning. Took us to stand inspection. They inspected us all over. Uh, they put me on washing pots and pans. From that, uh, right after breakfast in the morning till about 7.30 at night. Were there that we many were pots? all ready to leave before that, and another big group come in to eat. Oh. So uh, we got hung with another big deal in the dish pan. Wow. Pots and pans. I'm sure you weren't too... I got through. My both hands were uh, full of blisters. Oh, man. Uh-huh. Did you guys do something wrong? I mean, was that like a punishment, or was it just... Um... No, that was the result of all the dish pan washing and everything. Uh -huh. Boy, that's a, that's a long day of washing, uh, oh, washing yeah. dishes. We were stayed right there, yeah. Wow. Never replaced. Uh -huh. <laughs> so now it's quite an experience. It's, it certainly sounds like it. So after you did your ten weeks in basic training, what came next? What happened next? Next we went to uh, Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And what'd you do uh, there for uh, engine mechanic school? Now, now, how long were you there for? Uh, we were there for eleven weeks. Eleven weeks. Now, what 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 sort of things did you learn there? Uh, what sort of engines did you learn to work on? We learned uh, how to tear. Uh, uh, Pratt & Whitney uh, engine that went on the B-24 bombers. Wow. We learned how to tear them down and put them back together. How long did it take you to learn to do that? We were there 11 weeks. And so it took e you from start to finish? Each week was a different uh, section of the learning. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, you, one week you were on uh, whatever it was part they wanted you to learn on of the engine taking it apart or putting it back together, huh? So you spent 11 weeks in Michigan learning how to, you know, work on these engines for uh, for, for bombers. So yeah. now where did you go after that? From there we went to uh, Roswell, New Mexico. And what happened there? Uh, there we, we uh, worked on uh, 89 twin engine trainers. Wow. Uh, uh, just getting them run, keeping them running. So was that another 11 week? They, uh, they, they had uh, one bank uh, a radio engine on them and uh, so we worked on them to keep them flying. Mm -hmm. It's training, part of our training. Yeah. And now, now was that part of the 11 weeks or was this another 11 weeks? Uh, no, uh, 
Well, we, we, uh, we went there, we went to uh, Roswell. From Roswell, we went to Hobbs, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. From Hobbs, New Mexico, we went to Albuquerque, different fields. Uh -huh. And you all, and, and every time you went someplace new, you learned how to, to work on a new you engine. Working on engines all the time. What was your favorite engine to work on? Uh, well, that that one engine was the only one we oh, ever had. Oh, it was had. the only one. Okay, yeah. I didn't know if well, there were other ones at you yeah. know, different locations you were learning. Yeah, it was a fourteen, two cylinder bank engine, seven cylinders in a bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that's what we worked on. How long did it take you to master? Uh, you know, working on one of those things. Well, when I left. England, uh, after 22 months, I was still learning. <laughs> so there was always You some... never get it all. <laughs> yeah. It takes you a long time, but you got a lot of experience. Oh, I yeah. imagine, yeah. So you, now you just mentioned that you were over in England for 22 months, right? Right. Now, now, now when did you get over, uh, over to England? To England, we got there, uh, uh -huh. can I tell us here? Well, that's, no, I don't, I don't know the tell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we went October of 43. Uh, mm -hmm. We arrived in England. We went over in convoy. From the time we got on the ship from the convoy, it was 16 days later before we got off. So you were on a ship for 16 days. What was, that, it, what was that experience like? <laughs> rough. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it rough? Uh, well, we were, what we, we were on... Uh, what we call the Limey cattle boat. That was one that they had uh, reconstructed and set up with bunks from top to bottom. Kind of cramped, huh? With bunks that was loaded with the whole wow, uh, whole mess of uh, GIs. Yeah. So what were some of your duties there when you were over? Oh, when you were over in England. Uh, first thing you did was uh, get, uh, get right to work. Doing what? Work twelve-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And getting these uh, all the assemblies on the. All the stuff on the engines, all the extra parts we had to put on. You know what? I can't remember to tell you all the parts. The names of <laughs> names and me don't get along at all. Uh, <laughs> but 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 there were quite a few parts that needed you know, to be yeah, put on there. That we had to put on, and then get them uh, set into the mount that went on the engine or went on the aircraft. Now was this to make new planes or make repairs to planes that had been damaged or, uh, or what no. was it? No, engines was our uh, only thing that we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they had uh, a whole separate group of uh, aerospace, uh, I think they called them, uh, groups mm -hmm. that did all the work on the uh, airplane itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was a different outfit. Our, uh, our outfit was strictly engines. When did you start working every day? What time of the day? Well, uh, when we first got there, we worked from... Uh, Three in the morning till three in the afternoon. Wow. Uh, that went on for pretty near a year, I think. Wow. And then we changed to an eight hour shift. We had uh, those two shifts and then they changed to just two eight hour shifts. Were you happy to uh, oh, yeah. only work eight oh, hours? Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know what? We never minded it. Mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't do anything else in a way, so we were working. We thought we were doing something to help a little. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, time passed, but never mind it. Oh, you're always homesick, but uh, did you ever get any sort of letters or packages from from your mom and dad? Or oh yeah, yeah. What were some of the things they would send you? Oh yeah, candy. Candy. Yeah, cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cheeses and stuff like that. Oh. Cookies. Uh huh. Yeah, I swapped my cigarettes for candy because oh. I, I didn't smoke. So did you have a sweet tooth? Did you have a sweet tooth when you were? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Still have it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we put away a lot of that. So now, when you are over in England and you're, you know, tinkering with all of these engines and, and you know, making sure that they're always in, in, in tip-top shape, did, were you aware of what was going on in the war in, in other parts of the world? No, not much. You never heard much. Not, no, 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 why was I, that? I never had a little radio or anything. And uh, all the news we got uh, just by word of mouth or something. So you're somebody hear something. That, so uh, we we never knew too much what was going on. But you know what? We knew there was a lot going on. Oh though. yeah. <laughs> you could look up in the sky, and you could turn around in any direction. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, everybody. Jeez. 
Excuse me. I get very emotional. Yeah. I'll be all right. Maybe you want to shut it up. Save your film. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. You'd get up in the morning to go to work. You could start turning in a circle. You'd see aircraft uh, forming up to one their missions. Yeah. Wow. Uh, number, number. Hard to say how many they were. They'd be a group here. Of course, we were up in the northeast section of uh, the northeast section of England. We were uh, about 90 miles northeast of London. All that area was bomber bases. The whole section north of London there. Uh, and you, you could look, no matter where you look, there'd be planes taken off to take on their mission. At all hours of the day? Uh, no, that'd be mainly in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, except on D-Day. On D-Day, it was a continuous roar. Wow. From the time you got up in the morning until about 4.30 in the afternoon, there was a break, a lull, it got so quiet, it was startling. You hear nothing there. Wow. And boom, all of a sudden it started in again. Continuous roar. Now, planes were taking off and coming back, and taking off, and coming back. Most those were mostly fighters. Now, you said a couple of minutes ago that you really weren't aware of too much that was going on during World War II. But 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 on D-Day, you said you hear the planes going pretty much all day long. Yeah. Were you aware what of of what was happening on D-Day? Uh, we oh yeah, we figured what was uh, we knew what was happening. I guess. Yeah, the only word our mouth we'd get is some of our guys would be going out to, to get, uh, get engines off of planes that have been shot down. Mm -hmm. They'd go to retrieve the engines off them. They couldn't make it back to their bases. Mm -hmm. so and, they guys... were, and then they'd tell us about all the buildup of supplies wow. on the roads from our place uh, down to the, wherever the, uh, the, the invasion was going to take place. Mm -hmm. He said it'd be stockpiles of uh, supplies. All all sections of the road would be uh, loaded all wow. the way down. Wow. Yeah. So now that's, did... that's how we knew uh, things were getting close for invasion. Yeah. 